Yo, Elliot, I realized recently I have a constant feeling of inadequacy. I always feel like I'm not good enough. I know for a fact I'm amazing at something. The result is a constant anxiety that lurks within my subconscious and exposes itself when I'm overwhelmingly feel inadequate or anticipate inadequacy in the future. Uh, this feeling of inadequacy sometimes pushes me into perfectionism, which may be beneficial at times. However, the fear of being inadequate prevents me from taking action on some things. I have had these feelings ever since I can remember, and it has gotten worse with life's challenges. How could I suppress or properly manage these feelings? In general, what are your thoughts on this? This has been a huge issue for me on a daily basis since it has been getting worse, and I want to get it under control. Thanks a lot for your advice and guidance. So, you know, one of the things that I think we end up doing in, in our culture in, in particular is there's an overemphasis on ourselves. We think too much about ourselves. We constantly look in the mirror of our smartphones and our updates and our posts and seeing how the world reflects back to us, what we want them to say about us. And then we talk and or say something and then rethink about what we talked and said, or we do something and we mull over what we did and we should have done it differently. I think the whole focus on self is a part of the problem that we're dealing with. There was a time when men didn't think about themselves that much. They thought about what they were doing. They thought about God, the father and their family. And that was it. It wasn't until Sigmund Freud and this whole psychobabble revolution where all of a sudden we all reflecting on ourselves. We all thinking about ourselves. We feeling bad for ourselves. We feeling good about ourselves. We're really too feeling focused to even begin with, right? Always thinking and feeling about ourselves is truly narcissistic. And I'm not calling you out as a narcissist because I'm right there with you. This is just a... This is just a sign of our times. We live in the me generation. We live in the me time. Me, my feelings, my thoughts. What happened to me, right? This is <clears throat> this all stems from uh, snowflake uh, treatment from our parents. The everybody gets a trophy idea. Uh, Disney telling you that you're a special star, even if you're a retard. You ever notice that Disney and and the. The older I get and the more Disney comes out with these stupid movies, the more I realize that the biggest retards are given the most praise. So even the even like this is why stupid people think they're smart. Did you see that movie, the Lego movie? I watched the Lego movie with my kids many years ago. Lego movie. This guy who's the hero in the Lego movie, they call him the one. He's retarded. He's stupid. You ever watched Kung Fu Panda? He's fat and useless and stupid, but he's the hero. This is what the culture has pushed on us, that you're special, you're important, right? Uh, and it's an overemphasis and overfocus on me, on you, on our specialness. And I think it perverts our minds and it makes us sick and it, because we think about ourselves way too much, right? You say that you have this constant feeling of inadequacy, but you wouldn't have a feeling of inadequacy if you weren't thinking about yourself. If you were just doing what's in front of you. You gave me a bunch of things that, are, uh, that you know, you're, you're struggling with. You say, I don't want to commit with women because I feel like I'm not good enough. You don't want to commit to a woman because you don't feel like you're good enough because you're thinking too much about yourself. Right. You're saying that you're not good enough. That must mean that you have an idea of what is good and you're measuring yourself up to what is good. And you're contrasting and you're saying me, I'm not good enough. And this is the circle jerk. This is the crazy circle jerk. Your imagination of yourself plus your conception of yourself. So how I perceive myself to be plus the imagination of what I should be both fake made up versions of me in my head are battling with one another causing me not to take action in a particular direction. You're fighting with yourself. You're two fake versions of yourself are in your brain and you're fighting. The ideal me and the me that I think I am that is not really the me, but it's the me that's contrasted to the ideal me that doesn't measure up to the real me. So the bad me and the good me, both not really me, they're fighting in your head. And so you can't take action. It's schizophrenic. We're schizoid in our culture. It's, it's all kind of made up. Here's another one. He says, I'm an officer in the military and frequently worry that I'm inadequate leading my soldiers. I always question if I'm good enough or if I feel like I'm not. Here's an easy solution to that. 
do your job. Do your job to the best you can and don't think about it. This is another one from Edmund Hulse. He's like, just do your work. Just do your work. Do what you can every single day to the best of your ability and be done with it. Remember I said earlier, and I didn't even read that part of your question until now, but I called it out earlier when I said we do things and then we think about what we did and then we judge what we did and then now that event that happened two days ago is still living in my head and then I got two versions of myself battling over what should have happened Two days ago, we're living in the clouds. We're living in our imagination. We're not living in reality, men. All that is just circle jerk mindfuck stuff. You're playing with yourself. You got different conceptions of yourself. Dare I say demons that are invading your thoughts and causing a schism within your own soul. The battlefield for the soul is in the mind. Your feelings mean nothing. Did you know that? Did you know that feelings don't mean anything? Right? Right? Like, if I slap myself, what does that mean? Right? I feel tingle in my hand, but it doesn't mean anything. I feel it, but it doesn't mean anything. Every single feeling is only given its association based on what you think of it. Feelings don't mean anything. So once again, the battlefield goes back to the mind, right? Well, that's how we want to battle with our feelings. But the only reason why your feelings have any power is because you've given that feeling meaning. You could feel shit all day long and it doesn't really matter, right? But the minute you attach a meaning, a definition, an association with that feeling, now that feeling has now it's a, now it goes back up into the mind, and now you, you then you're wrestling with that feeling in your mind. We must rein in our minds, men. It's in your head. You know when they say this? Oh, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. People don't like to hear that when doctors say it's all in your head, but a lot of times it's all in your head, and we're doing it to ourselves. Let's continue. He says, I've wanted to start a dating advice YouTube channel now for years, but I've constantly delayed it because I feel like I'm not good enough. I must flawlessly learn everything about dating women before I post content out there because I feel like I'm not good enough. Listen, let me tell you, let me just be a little transparent with you here because I'm not, I'm not chastising you. I'm not ranting against you. I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated with our state of being as men in our culture and our time right now. I struggle with exactly what you're struggling with. When O. Elliot, like legit O. Elliot, 2013, 14 Elliot was star boy Elliot and everybody loved him. I had a million point five subscribers on YouTube. I could do no wrong. But then I started having feelings. I started trusting my feelings. And I let those feelings carry me away. And I did a downturn. I turned away from all that. I self-sabotaged. Right? But that wasn't it. That wasn't all. I didn't learn my lesson just yet. That was the beginning of the lesson that I needed to learn because the real struggle was how I'm going to come back to making these videos. I know I'm supposed to make videos. This is my calling, literally. It's what's in front of me. It's what's expected of me. It's the table that was set for Elliot Hulse on this planet. I, I would die not being Zusa if I didn't continue making YouTube videos. But I struggle just like you struggle trying to make YouTube videos. You're saying, I want to be perfect before I come back. I want you to do something. I want you to go back to some of my videos from 2018, 17, 18, 19. And watch that man, especially I put some on my YouTube, my Trump Camp YouTube, YouTube channel. Watch that man struggle. I'm fucking struggling in those videos. I'm making videos. I'm trying to make these videos, but I'm struggling. And you can even see it. People have noticed it. And I noticed it. I watch those videos now as I'm like cringing. I'm like, what, is, what am I trying to do? They sucked. Those videos were bad because I had all kind of internal struggle and judgment of myself going on. I was trying to be the old me, but I know that there's a new me. I wanted to be liked, but I wanted to be real. And it was just a fight, two dragons, just like you, right? I had those two guys, two versions of me fighting on the inside. But here's the key. I kept going. 
I kept going. I kept going even though I was fucked up. I was weird and it didn't work. And I was frustrated and I hated it. I kept going and here I am right now and I'm flowing free like a bird. I feel free. I'm finally free. I'm free. I'm free. I could do all this. I could do it like me like never before. This is the real me. But it required momentum. It required stumbling. It required fucking up. It required feeling bad. It required not liking myself. It required, it required a struggle, a fight. And so the same thing is with you. When you want to talk to girls or you want to make YouTube videos, you got to do it even though it hurts right now. You got to make those mistakes because that's how you build momentum. And momentum leads to success. You got to go. You got to just do it. You got to stop thinking about yourself. Stop thinking about yourself. Stop obsessing over yourself. Stop judging yourself. Just fucking do what's right in front of you. There are people that are like that just naturally, and I admire them because it doesn't come naturally to me either. I'm very egotistical, self-centered, narcissistic, focused on me. And so I've had to struggle. I've had to fight. But I have friends. I, I'm not even going to bring his name up. I got this one friend. He's ugly. <laughs> He's ugly, he's got bad luck, and he's not very charismatic. But you know what this guy has? He has a, and not even in, in a negative way, meaning like a, a I don't give a fuck attitude, like fuck you attitude. He has a attitude about himself, right? He just has this eh, attitude about himself. And he just keeps going, and he does some things that make me cringe for him, and he's just like, eh, because he don't care. He's not self, he's not focused on himself the same way that we focused on ourselves, the way we're trying to be, trying to live up to something. And you know what? There's all this talk about why this happens, right? Maybe you, because your daddy was hard on you, right? Or And so you have like daddy issues or maybe because, you know, your mama wanted you to replace your daddy and she built you up but let you down. And all kinds of, you know, all kinds of psychobabble bullshit from Sigmund Freud that we use to excuse why we are the way out we are. But none of that matters. That's why Jesus says, be born again. Die to your child self. That's another one that people, uh, you know, they like to say your inner child. Inner child needs to die. Oh, you should love your inner child. Sympathize with your inner child. Empathize with your inner child. No, the inner child needs a spank. Needs a spanking. Shut up. Get out of here. Because the adult me is here and you're getting in my way. So these feelings of inadequacy and being pushed to perfectionism, they're all going to go away. They're all going to go away if you just do the thing to have the power. That's the key. The key is to go. The key is to get going. Don't you say, how should I suppress or manage these feelings? First of all, stop thinking about your feelings. The feelings don't mean anything. You don't need to suppress or manage them. You got to stop thinking about them. You feel it and you say, huh, huh, huh. there it is. There's, and you know what? What a great thing to do is objectify the feeling. What do I mean by objectify it? Where do you feel it? People say shit like, I feel inadequate. Inadequacy is not a feeling. Did you know that? You don't actually feel inadequate. Where do you feel inadequacy? How does inadequacy feel? You know what you're going to do if you try to answer that question? You're going to give me thoughts, conceptions, ideas. It's all in your fucking head. You don't feel inadequate. You feel tension in your solar plexus. I feel tension in my shoulders. I feel jitters in my belly, right? I feel stiffness in my head. I feel clenching in my jaw, right? I feel, I feel detached from my feet. I feel swollen in my shoulders and head, right? I'm describing some of the ways I feel sometimes when I'm not focused. That's what you actually feel, right? Inadequacy is what you've attached to it. You've decided that this feeling is inadequacy and I'm going to allow it to stop me from doing something. You made that up. You made that up. Recognize feelings have nothing to do with it. How should I suppress or manage these feelings? You don't. 
You see the feelings and you let them be. You don't engage the feelings. You don't rationalize the feelings. You don't interpret the feelings. You don't analyze the feelings. You feel the feelings, objectify it by being real about the feelings. What is it? It's a, it's a, it's butterflies in my belly. Well, huh, yeah, yeah. that's all it is, right? How do you manage them? You don't. You just let them be what they are, actual feelings, not concepts. They're not concepts. He says, in general, what are your thoughts on this? It's been a huge issue for me. So, like I said, objectify your feelings, feel your feelings, recognize that they are not what you think they are because you made that up. So just stop the mental bar garbage, stop the mental conversation, and do the thing anyway. Do the thing, do it thoroughly, do it to the best of your ability, and then wash your hands. Like you said, when you're in the military and you're an officer and you're leading your soldiers, do it. Do it to the best of your ability in that moment and then be done. Don't go back. This is another bad, bad habit a lot of us have, and I've done it too. We go back and we think about what just happened and then mull over it. What could have happened, what should have happened, what I should have done and doing all that kind of judgment. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, especially if you can't pinpoint what you're going to do better next time. That's the only reason why you should be thinking about the past. The only reason why you should think about the past is, oh, okay, next time I won't do that. I'll do that. Have a solution. Next time I won't. Instead, a lot of times we do is we, 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 th we, wish, we wish we could go back. Oh, man, I should have. I could have. I wish. That, again, that's, you just mess with your head. That don't make any sense. I'm not based in reality. So there you have it, man. That's my, that's my opinion on that. That's a very good question. I'm happy I was able to deliver that rant for you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.